First at four, Governor Whitmer's next step in the battle against COVID-19. Today, I'm taking action to further protect Michigan families from the spread of this virus. And make sure that when How long it will last and what is changing just ahead. Also, more money is on the way. President Trump taking action designed to help small businesses and their employees. Ben? Devin, we're pushing 60 on this Friday afternoon. Wouldn't it be nice to carry that into the weekend? I'll be it with rain chances. We'll see if we can get it done right now. First at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Devin Skillian in for Karen Drew. First at 4, she warned us it was coming, and today Governor Whitmer confirmed her stay-at-home order has been extended, though with some changes. We'll be breaking that down over the next couple of hours. But let's start with how long this current order will run. It will run through May 15th and it takes effect immediately. Also today, the Republican-led legislature set up a bipartisan committee to review the state's response to COVID-19. State Senate passed a bill to limit the governor's emergency powers. If that would pass the House, though, the governor is promising a veto. And we just learned the number of infections in Michigan has now climbed to more than 36,000, and more than 3,000 families have now lost someone they love. Let's get to Kimberly Gill looking at the changes in this most recent governor's order, which came out today. The guidance will affect all of us, Kim. It will, Devin. I've got the order right here just going through it. Good afternoon to you, too, by the way. The uh, governor is calling for all of us to wear masks more often, and she's easing some restrictions that have caused heated debate. Republican lawmakers still aren't satisfied, though, that their concerns are being heard. Governor Whitmer calls this the preliminary stage of economic reengagement, but it comes with a warning. We will make informed decisions in the coming days about potential further economic reengagement, but it depends on you. If we continue to see our numbers decline, we can, we can responsibly consider additional steps we can take. If we see an increase, we may have to be nimble enough to go backward. We haven't seen the collaboration up to this point that we've requested and that what we would like to see. I mean, we are the voice of the people, and there's thousands of people across our state who are frustrated, and they've had their livelihoods taken away. And here are some more of the changes. Landscapers can get back into business with strict social distancing and no contact with customers is best, according to the governor. Big box stores can reopen non-essential areas that were closed, such as garden centers. Retailers selling non-essential goods can reopen, but only for delivery and curbside pickup. Residents with two homes can travel between those two homes. The use of motorized boats is now allowed and golf is also allowed, but without golf carts. The state's chief medical executive says without a coronavirus vaccine, we'll be taking small steps forward. So life in the foreseeable future will not go back exactly to what it was before COVID-19. So this is truly going to be a marathon and not a sprint. So guys, the other big difference in our lives, face masks. The governor orders, uh, her order now requires people to wear non-medical masks inside enclosed public places. There's no criminal penalty and you still need to stay six feet apart even when you're wearing a mask or some sort of face covering. So Devin, we'll be talking more about this order coming up on the news at five and six and what comes next out of Lansing. For now, though, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, KG, we will see you then. Sure. Well, ready or not, as we just mentioned, face masks or some kind of covering going to be part of our lives for months to come. If you haven't been wearing a mask, regularly before Dr. Frank Me George says there are some important things to know. First and foremost, the CDC says children under two should not wear a mask or other face covering. There is a risk of choking, strangulation, or suffocation. Remember, babies and young toddlers have smaller airways and breathing through a mask is more difficult for them. Now, the CDC also says you should not put a mask on anyone who may not be able to remove it themselves. With that said, most adults and children over two can wear a face covering safely. Regardless of what kind of mask you are wearing, it is very important to wash your hands or use a hand sanitizer before you put it on and after you take it off. 
You want to avoid touching your face with unclean hands or gloves. You also want to avoid adjusting or fiddling with your mask while you're wearing it, so it's really important to make sure that it fits close to your face. Now, it should cover both your nose and your mouth, and you do not need to wear a mask if you're driving around in your car, but you should put it on before you get out if you're going into a store or any place else where it might be difficult to maintain proper distance. Back to you. All right, Frank, and he will continue his guidance later on with a look at some of the best fabrics that you can use for homemade masks. We've got that coming up at 5 o'clock. A memorial procession is set tonight for a five-year-old girl in Detroit who died from coronavirus. Skylar Herbert died last week after complications from the virus. The first Michigan child to die from it after rare complications. Skylar's parents, interestingly enough, coincidentally enough, our first responders, police, fire, and other officers are going to ride through Detroit's west side in her memory. And we'll have live coverage of that coming up tonight at 5 o'clock as well. President Trump just opened a multi-billion dollar faucet ready to get more money flowing into America's small businesses. He signed the newest coronavirus relief package this afternoon worth about $484 billion, so close to half a trillion dollars. Also has money for hospitals and for more coronavirus testing. At 6 o'clock tonight, we're going to take a closer look at how Michigan businesses can get their share of this new money. Now, some Georgia businesses are reopening amid a lot of controversy. Social distancing guidelines do remain in place, while owners and workers say they are taking extra care to clean gyms, nail, hair salons, uh, tattoo parlors, all among the first to open. The order by Georgia's governor to reopen businesses has been criticized by many, including President Trump, who says it's too early. About a half a dozen other states, though, are starting to take similar measures. The crashing economy has left so many families struggling and wondering where their next meal uh, will be coming from. That's putting a real squeeze on charitable or, uh, organizations who've been trying to answer that same question. Everett Cassidy focuses on one group that needs a helping hand so that they can help others. We first told you about Blessings in a Backpack Avondale back in November. They operate out of this building here in Rochester Hills, providing meals for students who would otherwise go without on the weekends. But now they're in desperate need of your help. It's times like these when their services are needed more than ever. Blessings in a Backpack Avondale is still providing meals for students while school is out for the year. It's important to me because these are our neighbors. These are families who are streets over from us who have now find themselves in a situation where they not, may not be able to feed their kids. And what we've seen is in the past six weeks, the needs of our program have quadrupled. In November, we first showed you the system the nonprofit has in place. Volunteers pack these grocery bags with food, and those bags are then placed in the backpacks of students who need the meals every Friday. Could very well be that family six weeks ago who could feed for provide food for their kids are now finding themselves furloughed or no longer having jobs or no incomes. Now with social distancing measures in place for packing the bags, Fisher has had to make adjustments as to how they get the food to students as well. Everyone has to wear masks as well as gloves. And then during the food pickups, it's a similar approach in terms of masks and gloves and uh, keeping six feet apart. Blessings in a Backpack had previously been providing meals for 350 children a week. As of right now, they're hoping to be able to provide for 700 children, which is only half of the need right now. They hope to keep the food distribution going through what would have been the end of the school year, June 12th. We can use f food donations, um, many of the items that you would feed your own family, beef ravioli, macaroni and cheese, canned fruit, canned vegetables. Um, from a financial aspect, um, we are certainly looking for donations. And for more information on how you can help Blessings in a Backpack or even just volunteer your time, we posted a link to their website on ours. Just go to clickondetroit.com. Everard Casimir, Local 4. Yeah, blessings in a backpack. Uh, Avondale has been serving children with food insecurity for 12 years now in Troy, Bloomfield Township, Auburn Hills, and Rochester Hills. We've made it to another weekend, but will Mother Nature allow us to spend some socially distanced time outside? Let's get a sneak peek uh, back at Ben's place. Hey, Ben. Yeah, Devin, happy Friday. Uh, the warm temperatures have been socially distant from us for a while, but they're starting to come back. Look at some of these numbers out there. It's all 50s right now, with the exception of the Lake Huron shoreline, which is still hanging out in the upper 40s there, uh, Port Huron up to Lexington. 
uh, just below that 50 degree mark, but everybody else, uh, uh, how very close out there at 51, and it's 58 officially right now at Metro Airport. So here are the numbers we're looking at over the upcoming weekend. Just a little bit cooler tomorrow, Sunday at 59. Sunday is definitely going to be the nicer of the two days, but the rain chances on Saturday, they're still there, but they're a lot slimmer. We'll take a look at the timing and who's going to get that coming up in just a few minutes. Devin. An email from Jeff. Uh, ben, we'll be right back to you here shortly. Still ahead, it might be the next best thing after Google Maps for outer space. We'll show you what NASA has been working on now for decades. Up first, I've been enlisted in the fight against COVID-19. And later on, a special song for these tough times as a World War II vet does something most singers can only dream about. We've got that coming up. If you're a professional chef or even a home cook, we need you on Tasty